Hello and welcome to this video on combining substitutions in logic. It's also going to be relevant to type systems and Hindley Milner. Um, in a previous video, we looked at substitutions, which are sets of mappings. So here we have a substitution where we've got a mapping from H to J. When we apply it on the string hello, we're changing that H to a J, we get jello. Um, go back and watch the previous video if you are at all confused about that. We can obviously extend this concept to applying multiple substitutions. We briefly looked at this. We were mainly looking at applying the same substitution twice. But we can obviously look at applying different substitutions. So here we've got S1, which takes H to J, and S2, which takes O to Y. Um, and when we apply S1 first, um, and then S2, what we get is jelly. Uh, so H turns into J, and the O turns into Y, uh, we get jelly. Uh, and if we think about this, well, um, maybe we want to combine these substitutions rather than have this S1 and S2 floating around. Can we compose these in a way? Can we combine them in a way uh, so that we can say, well, there must be some substitution that does the same thing. Uh, in this case, well, you can look at it. What turns hello into jelly? Well, the H needs to turn into a J. The O needs to turn into a Y. Uh, and so this S3 can just be H to J, O to Y. And in this case, it's actually just the union of the two other substitutions. This is not always the case, uh, and we'll see some more complicated examples. Uh, but actually, in this case, for any string, this substitution S3 is the same as first applying S1 and then S2. Just to let that sink in, uh, let's do another example. Um, so for example, we can have this, uh, where we have a substitution 1, H to I, a substitution 2, O to H. Um, and then we want to see what happens when you apply S1 and then S2 on the string OH. Well, you apply S1, uh, that takes the H to an I, so you get OI, and then we apply the S2 on OI, and you, that takes the O to an H, and you get HI, or HI. So there's some S3 that does this thing. Uh, if we look at basically how these letters have been mapped, the O is turned into an H, the H is turned into an I, so again, it's just like unioning the two substitutions. Um, however, if you flip this around, uh, so if we say, well, what happens if you want to apply S2 first and then S1? Uh, well, if we applied S2 first, we get O turns to H, so we get the string HH, and then we apply S1, uh, well, H goes to I, so we get the string II. Um, and obviously, this has got to be a different combined substitution, uh, so this is interesting. So applying substitutions in different orders gets us different results. Um, and therefore combining substitutions in different orders must be, be different, it's not a commutative operation. Um, so there's, there is an S4 for this, if we look at it, well it just has turned the O into an I and the H into an I, and so that is our combined substitution. Um, so again, this kind of definition of this combined function uh, is it takes two substitutions, S1 and S2, the order is important, and it returns a combined substitution which is the same uh, or equivalent to applying S2 and then applying S1. So it's a bit backwards in the orders of the arguments, um, but, but that's what this function does. It combines S1 and S2 uh, as if S2 was applied first and then S1. Let's apply this to a couple of examples, uh, maybe work through it a bit more slower, a bit more uh, process-driven approach uh, in case that helps. Let's say we have these two substitutions. S1 is a substitution with the mappings alpha to gamma and beta to delta. S2 is a substitution with the mapping alpha to beta. Um, so what's combine S1 and S2? Now if we remember our definition, uh, we're looking for a substitution such that it's equivalent to applying S2 first and then S1. Um, one way to go about this is you can kind of just inspect it and see, hey, how, how do things map? Um, we can draw up a table uh, to figure out how this thing uh, is done. There's also more efficient algorithms. You can have a look at them, uh, but, but this is an easy way to do it uh, with kind of pen and paper. Uh, so let's say we have this uh, lowercase s as a, some, some symbol. Um, so let's have a look at all the symbols on the left-hand side um, of, our, of our mappings, because those are the only things that can be mapped. Um, so those are the alphas and betas in this case. So let's pop those in our table. Um, we're going to first look at applying S2 to them, and then we're going to look at applying S1 on the result of that, uh, because when we look at that, that's basically what our combined function needs to simulate. So S2 applied on alpha, well, we're mapping uh, alpha to beta, so that will give us beta, um, and then we apply S1 on that, well then we're using this beta to delta, and we'll get a delta. Um, let's look at the second row now, um, well, maybe we have this beta, 
in S2 actually, the beta isn't mapped to anything, uh, so it doesn't go anywhere. So actually nothing happens, it just becomes a beta again. Um, and then we apply S1, and again we've got this mapping beta to delta, um, and we can apply that and we get a delta. We can look at these mappings, so when we apply S2 and then S1, well really that's taking um, alpha to delta and beta to delta. So that's really equivalent to these mappings alpha to delta and beta to delta. And that's exactly what uh, the combined substitution is. It's just those uh, that set of mappings, alpha to delta, beta to delta. And if you want to try this on a few different strings, uh, check it does actually work. Uh, check it is always equivalent to applying S2 and then S1. Uh, go ahead. Um, you can also kind of look at it and trace it through. So if you look at an alpha or S2, it converts it to a beta. S1, it converts it to a delta. And same with the beta. So uh, hopefully that's been helpful. Let's have a look at another exercise uh, just to really drive this home. We have two different substitutions. Uh, we've got the first one, S1, alpha to gamma, and then beta to delta, and this S2, alpha to beta, and beta to alpha. Um, so actually that S2 is a bit weird because it almost swaps alpha and betas. Um, so what is the result of combining substitutions S1 and S2? And remember that definition, uh, we're looking for the substitution that's equivalent to first applying S2 and then applying S1. Let's bring up our table. Um, again, we can find uh, where do we all map from. Well, that's our alphas and betas here. Um, we'll put those in our table. Um, let's look at the first row, the alpha. Um, well, if we apply the S2 on alpha, um, well, we're using this mapping to get beta. Um, and then we apply S1 on that. Uh, well, where does the beta get mapped to? It gets mapped to a delta. Next row, uh, let's look at that beta. Um, well, again, we apply S2 on that beta. Well, there's a mapping from beta to alpha, so we'll get an alpha. Again, you can kind of see from this table exactly how S2 is swapping alpha and beta. Um, and then we apply S1 on that, or S1 takes an alpha and maps it to a gamma, uh, and so we get a gamma. As before, we can kind of look at what does uh, applying S2 and then S1 do overall to all these uh, things on the left-hand side of our mappings. Uh, what takes alpha and turns it into a delta, and beta and turns it into a gamma, um, and so those are our results, and that is our combined substitution. Again, test this out, see if it works. Um, finally, uh, let's look at a third exercise. I'm not going to go through this one in depth. You can do the exact same table method. You can do it by inspection. Um, you can do it by looking up a different algorithm online. But you can pause here now if you don't want to see the solution, you want to try it yourself. Otherwise, the solution is this. Um, so again, you know, we've got this combined substitution. You can also see how about if you switch this around? What is combine S2, S1? Is that different? Uh, why is that different? Uh, if you find it's different, um, have a think about what exactly that means. Hopefully this video has been helpful in understanding how we combine these substitutions. I know we haven't explained why combining substitutions is going to be really useful, um, but you'll see in the next video uh, where we use it in unification, which is this concept that's really, really useful in logic, really useful in type systems, and actually even in languages that don't use Hindley-Milner, uh, because actually Hindley-Milner is quite a theoretical type system. A lot of them still use this concept of unification as a core part of their type system. So if you've used Rust, if you used Haskell, if you used OCaml, TypeScript, um, Python, all of these things use unification at some point to infer types. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.